Weeknights starting at 6 on MeTV Hawaii. of interest to everyone. Sunday afternoons, tune into Me TV for a three-hour tour. Oh, you can say that again. A three-hour tour. One of my favorite melodies. It's Me TV's three-hour tour of Gilligan's Island. Just leave everything to me. Six episodes of The Castaways. Incredible. For three full hours. It's a three-hour tour on Me TV. Sunday afternoons, starting at two on Me TV Hawaii. Hey world, I have a quick message. It's about safe driving. All right, let's go. Anytime you're driving, have the seatbelt buckle tight. Both hands on the wheel and your phone out of sight. We're not in your hand trying to text somebody back. Because if you do, your car might get smacked. The moral of the story, just put your phone down. The people on the road will stay safe and sound. Put your phone down, put your phone down. People on the road will stay safe and sound. Yeah. <laughs> Julie was always a, a voracious reader. She carried two novels on an airplane because she'd read one on a three, four hour ride. And at some point, I began to notice that she would read a page and couldn't remember what she had just read and she'd have to go back and read it again. I don't remember much these days after I read, but less does for me and I love it. Tune in to KITV4 Island News, weekdays at 6 and 10 p.m. for Trending Tonight. Don't miss out. Sponsored by Hawaiian Telecom, Hawaii's technology leader. Digital news on demand, KITV.com. This is KITV4 Island News, what you need to know. Now, from KITV4 Island News, this is Good Morning Hawaii. That's what guests at the Kahala Hotel and Resort heard in their rooms Saturday evening after police say a guest fired several shots from his hotel room, putting the entire resort on lockdown. Now that set off a 10-hour standoff that just ended a few hours ago. Good morning, Hawaii. I'm Tom George. Aloha, Kakahiaka. I'm Annalisa Burgos. And here's what we know so far. Just after 4 a.m., the suspect, who was barricaded alone inside a hotel room, shot himself dead, according to military personnel on scene. KITV4 sources confirmed a negotiator with the U.S. Navy was on scene, and Honolulu police believe the male is a military service member. We're told the man's family was also on scene, but they're safe. It started just after 5.40 last night when Honolulu police officers first responded to a report of shots fired. When security went to the man's room, they say he fired a gunshot through the door. Police say no one was injured. Now, again, this was going on all night. We have had crews there on the scene throughout this ordeal. KITV4's Eddie Dowd standing by on scene right now. And Eddie, we know some people were allowed to leave a few hours before this ended. Uh, now, of course, it's all over. What are you seeing out there right now? Oh, that's right, Tom and Elisa. A very uh, much different scene on this street going to the hotel, to the Kahala Hotel. That's because before me, just a couple hours ago, like you mentioned, uh, police were scattered here in cruisers and uh, uh, law enforcement um, with uh, heavy assault rifles as this standoff situation continued. Now, I want to show you this video at around 4 a.m. This is when uh, we started to see those police start to pack up their gear after that 10-hour standoff situation. We saw them uh, finally getting the first break that we saw uh, as they're able to, able to put off some of that body armor and rifles that we saw back into the trucks. And then we saw cars being let, uh, allowed to leave the hotel and that stream of cars coming out. 
This was shortly after 4 a.m. And then after those cars were let um, out of the hotel, we saw an ambulance follow it. Now, we do not know um, who was in that ambulance and if this was the ambulance that uh, may have had the um, uh, person who was barricading himself in that hotel room. But we did see that ambulance leave the scene shortly after 4 a.m. We did talk with uh, one woman who is 85 years old. She was in the hotel's dining area for around eight hours. She wasn't allowed to leave until they got the all clear around uh, 1 a.m. that it was safe to leave. Here's what she had to say about the experience. What happened? I was happened? looking for the bathroom and I couldn't find it. So when I was walking back in, I saw these two guys with a gun, with a rifle or gun, and they were facing up, and they said, oh, there's nothing there. And But then they kept yelling at me to walk fast because I'm slow in walking. And I said, what way? said, just walk in, just walk in. So I just took my time walking in, and they said, just stay in there. And she was finally able to get home around 2 a.m. That's when we saw uh, her getting into that vehicle shortly before 2. She told me her normal bedtime is around 10.30 p.m., so definitely a long night for her. But just to want to recap, this is the scene right now behind me to that road leading to the hotel. You can see the police um, presence has cleared uh, as operations have been able to resume, people going back and forth. But definitely uh, stay with KITV4 as we uh, continue to try to get more information in terms of uh, what exactly led to this incident and how um, it ended. We'll send it back to you. For for now, but reporting live, Eddie Dowd, KITV4, Island News. Yeah, and seeing on social media, really scary for those workers and guests and people yeah. that live in the area all night there. And now some people were fortunate to be able to get out, but dozens of guests, staff, and diners were kept inside. Yeah, that included the restaurant where people were eating, some just starting to order their dinner. David Swanson was playing the piano at the veranda when he said the incident started, and he told our team what had happened. I just saw a crowd of people rush up from upstairs, from downstairs, from the Primaria restaurant. Um, I didn't know what was going on, but soon after, all uh, the staff and the um, security asked us to clear out. Yeah, the evacuation there, about 100 people were uh, told to shelter in place in the ballroom. Swanson also told KITV4 he and others were told to shelter there in the lobby as well. He says everyone was calm and staff provided water and made them comfortable throughout the night. Yeah, and this didn't just impact the hotel itself. Police set up a pretty wide perimeter around the area, which of course prevented some people from getting back to their hotel rooms, but it also stopped people who live in apartments nearby from getting home. One man told KITV4 he was returning to his condo unit after going to church and realized that police had blocked access to his complex. Now he says he has not seen anything like this happen in the area before. Uh, when we first got here, the police didn't really say much. They said that there was a possible active shooter inside the hotel, and they just asked us to pull over in this uh, parking lot back here. Uh, they told us that we would have to just wait there uh, if we lived here or just turn around and go somewhere else. Now, Turriello, who you just heard from there, he says he's only met nice people in the area, so he's really surprised by this incident. And other residents who had gone out for dinner only found themselves returning to police telling them they needed to wait out the incident in the parking lot until an all clear was given. It's a very quiet, calm place between the hotel and the apartments and uh, I think everybody sort of respects everybody else and so to have a, a, a disruption of this seriousness is discouraging and I mean, I think we all have feelings for the people that may be involved. I, I uh, actually live uh, part-time on the mainland, and uh, one of the things that makes Hawaii unique is the fact that <clears throat> these type of things don't happen in, in Hawaii, uh, including in Honolulu. So it's really surprising that uh, something like this would actually occur here. 
And so at the time, the men there telling our reporter that they had planned to sleep in their cars until police allowed them back into their condos. And with the lockdown over, hopefully they're back home. Yeah, and you can imagine people on vacation, really scary for them too, that are staying at the hotel. Some of the guests who were going back to the resort for the night weren't allowed back in their rooms. One guest told Kansi before, when they got back, the hotel staff told them the man was shooting gunshots from his balcony. The least expected here at the Kahala. Like, it's such a quiet, private... I mean, and you escape on vacation, and you just think, you know, you're, you're disconnecting from the rest of the world and problems and da da da, da and to think something like this could happen. It's unreal. It's such a beautiful, safe, I don't know, gorgeous area here, and to have something like this happen, beyond bizarre. It's, it's, it's everywhere. The gun violence, it's scary. So you don't expect it in Hawaii? No, 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 not in Hawaii, no. And especially at the Kahala, it's beautiful. Now, the woman you just heard from there, she's visiting with her family from California. She said they spent their Saturday at the beach and they hoped to be able to get back to their hotel room in time to pack for their flight that's scheduled to leave today. And a man who was out on a Saturday evening stroll with his family says he noticed several police cars speeding down Kahala Avenue. They decided to check out what was happening. And then when we got to Kahala Resort, uh, I asked one of the cops and then he said there's some kind of suicidal man. So we go to the uh, ocean side, to the beach side, and then everybody with the AKs and everything, the, the cops, they're like, they're telling everybody to get off the beach and the restaurants, everybody to hide, so we had to run away. It's kind of freaky and scary because usually this is the first time we live here 10 years already. It doesn't really happen. Something like that is in Kahala. Lendl says he also saw police telling guests who were trying to look out on their balconies to get back inside. Now, while all this was going on, the Kahala Hotel and Resort says it provided the guests who were stranded in their lobby in the ballroom. They gave them food, pillows, and blankets while they were waiting hours for that situation to be resolved. Now, just for reference, the hotel is located right there in Kahala. You see it on your screen right there on the beach. It's been open for almost 60 years, and it's become really well known as a luxury resort that's popular with royalty, Hollywood stars, heads of state, and other celebrities, and as well as locals. Yeah, so Such definitely a gonna, scary experience. <clears throat> scary experience and uh, still some unanswered questions. What led up to this? We're going to continue following that story, but just, um, you know, everything uh, all, all finished as of a, a few hours ago. But all right, turning now to your weekend forecast. We've got a live look outside at Honolulu. Meanwhile, we want to island hop over to Maui, check in with meteorologist Malika Dudley. How's it looking out there, Malika? Good morning, Tom and Annalisa. Good morning, everyone. Here in upcountry Maui, it is cold. I'm shivering and it's 55 degrees on my thermometer. So let's take you out to your graphics and show you what is happening. Let's look at the big picture. We have high pressure. It's still way off to the north. It's moved a bit more to the east. Low pressure to the northeast has nudged a bit more to the west. So now it's cutting off our trade winds even more than it was yesterday. A disturbance is expected to move southeast across the state today reaching Oahu this morning Maui County midday and the Big Island tonight right now winds are light northeasterlies for Oahu Molokai and Kauai variable through Maui and the Big Island with a southerly element working its way in satellite shows a combo of high and low clouds we should have some pretty sunrise colors today radar is a bit difficult to read though because of those high clouds also showing up on here so you can see the low level wind flow so anything that's coming from the north and northeast for Kauai through Molokai is likely low level moisture as we zoom on into Kauai we can see some heavier showers off the southern and east coast we see some pockets of heavy showers that move through the north shore on Oahu it looks like they've just dissipated um, some showers offshore of Molokai most of what we see on Maui are those high clouds since they are streaming from west to east so that's the returns that we're seeing there and on the big island quiet for now but a pocket of moisture right off of the Kohala coast so we'll keep an eye on that and today we do expect that instability I'll have more details on that and your eight-day forecast coming up in a little bit back to you
An update now on your coronavirus numbers. The Department of Health is reporting 114 new cases of COVID-19 across the state. 74 on Oahu, 27 on Maui, 12 on Hawaii Island, and one resident diagnosed out of state. Another person diagnosed with the coronavirus has died, raising the state's death toll to 471. All right, the time now, 6.12 a.m. Calls for change at the Honolulu Police Department in the wake of a teenager being shot and killed by officers. Yeah, for many, there are still no answers. The new calls from the community for more transparency. Those stories and more are coming up. Don't go away. Good morning, Hawaii. We'll be right back on your Sunday. You see, times are hard, but that won't stop me. It's my time. Time to grow. Time to learn. Meet new friends. Find new challenges. It's my time. Time to seize my future. Time to go to college. Time to sharpen my skills. To jumpstart my career. Hard times shouldn't get in the way of your time. Contact your high school college counselor or visit collegeiswithinreachhawaii.com to find out how to apply to college and receive financial aid for next fall. It's, it's your, your time. time. Okay. Yeah, that was headquarters. We've been made. We've got to dish the car. Yes, let's go. What are we going to do with the car? We can't just ditch it. Well, they did pay us to save the world. Why don't we start by saving a life? Mahalo for your donation to Kidney Cars. We'll pick up the car from any location. Donate a car, save a life. Call Kidney Cars today for more information. Aloha, Kaniala, Danny Klaikini. If you need Medicare insurance, call Premier Benefit Consultants. You know, this Kamaaina company represents more Medicare Advantage plans than anyone else in Hawaii. And will give you good advice for free. They believe in family, integrity, and exceptional service. Old school, local style. Contact Premier Benefit Consultants for Medicare advice you need and service you deserve. Mahalo. Federal Credit Union, here for all your money needs, here for life. This is Good Morning Hawaii. Welcome back. Your time now, 614. After Honolulu police officers shot and killed a 16-year-old boy last week, many people in the community calling for more transparency in HPD's follow-up investigation. KITV4's Eddie Dowd tells us the questions people want answered. The fact that HPD has said this investigation will take months and that despite there being body cam footage, it's yet to be released. That's just one of the concerns people had at this rally, calling for more information into what led to the death of 16-year-old I Remember Sidecap. According to the Honolulu Police Department, Sidecap was involved in a robbery on Monday where a Mo'ili Ili resident was held at gunpoint. He was later allegedly driving a stolen car with five other people during a pursuit that ended with the car going into the canal on Kalakala Avenue and Phillip Street where cops opened fire. I, I think that's why we're all out here is that we, we want our police to, uh, to work harder on not, uh, not using uh, lethal force in resolving issues. According to Honolulu Police Chief Susan Ballard, HPD opened fire after an officer believed they saw a firearm in the vehicle. But so far, HPD has not reported if any weapons have been located. We have to go back and backtrack to see if uh, any firearms were uh, tossed or, you know, we have to go really search the scene. That's going to take a little bit longer. The police are putting together a timeline of what happened and sort of trying this case in the public without any of the evidence being released. For some at Saturday's rally, that timeline is not adding up. When the car drove into the canal and shot at it still, like, what the, like, why, why? Defense attorney Jackie Esser believes having an outside entity take over will increase transparency. The problem is, is that we need independent police investigation into police shootings. Um, right now we have the police investigating the police whether or not there was an excessive use of force. 
KITV4 reached out to the Honolulu Police Department for comment, but did not respond to our request. Eddie Dowd, KITV4 Island News. Well, many criminal justice advocates say Honolulu Police Chief Susan Ballard made the right move when she chose to step down. Ballard on Friday said she will retire June 1st. In her performance evaluation earlier in the week, the police commission noted she fell below expectations in the categories of leadership and management. Deputy Public Defender Jackie Esser, you heard her earlier, says that she hopes the police commission will find a replacement that takes the department in a new direction. Looking to the future, we strongly encourage the police commission to select a police chief who operates the tar department transparently and with accountability and is willing to take on the tough job to address racial bias in policing here. Chief Ballard replaced former Chief Louis Kealoha, who was recently sentenced for conspiracy and corruption. Ballard is Oahu's first female police chief. Turning now to an Army officer's lawsuit after police in Virginia pulled him over in a traffic stop, then pepper sprayed and handcuffed him. But as ABC's Elizabeth Schulze reports, the suit says he did nothing wrong. Going on. This morning, growing outrage over this newly released body camera. What's going on? Two Virginia police officers threatening, drawing their guns and pepper spraying a uniformed U.S. Army second lieutenant during a traffic stop. What's going on? Get out of the car now! What's going on? What's going on? You're fixing to ride the light, son. The Windsor, Virginia officers saying they stopped Army Second Lieutenant Karan Nazario for a missing rear license plate, even though he had a temporary plate taped to the back of his new SUV. His hands raised, Nazario, who is black and Latino, recorded the incident on his cell phone, calmly telling the officers he's afraid to get out of his car. I'm honestly afraid to get out. Can I? Yeah, dude, you should be. Get out. Get out of the car. Get your hands off me, get please. The... Get your hands off me. You know what? Get your hands off me. Get your hands off me. I didn't do anything. Don't do that. Sir, get out of the Don't car do now. that. Hey, Don't out do of that. Now. Don't do that. I'm trying to talk to you. Okay. I'm trying to I'm talk, talk to you. Get out. Just relax. get out of the car. Can you please get relax? Out. Can get you out. please relax? Get out of the car right I, now. Now. This is not how you treat a vet. Uh, I'm actively serving this country, and this is how you're going to treat me? I didn't do anything. Whoa, hold on. Okay. What's going on? Hold on. Watch it. Watch it. He was eventually released with no charges. Now, Nazario is suing the officers for violating his constitutional rights. Why am I being treated like this? Why? You're not cooperating. Get on the ground. You think officers should know that? The body cameras may be new. The violence isn't. One officer said in a report after the traffic stop that Nazario willfully disregarded their orders to pull over. The lawsuit says he waited less than two minutes to stop, wanting to get to this nearby well-lit gas station. Some calling this just the latest example of excessive use of force by the police toward people of color. What should have occurred is the individual police officer who initiated the stop should have given clear, concise directions, answering questions if necessary. The level of force that was used for that type of infraction, which by the way is not even a crime, it's a violation of law, was excessive. The Windsor Police Department did not respond to requests for comment, but the town manager reportedly told a local newspaper both officers still work for the department. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Wow, yeah, really uh, aggressive in that video, but I mean, uh, you know, the, the, at least there's body camera video to kind of sh yeah. show everything. All right, well, uh, time now, 620. The price of paradise getting even more out of reach with housing prices skyrocketing. That's right. It's not just Hawaii. Home prices on the mainland also going up. Why experts say it's happening and what it means if you're in the market for a home right now. Stay with us. You're watching Good Morning Hawaii. what the future holds. So let's protect what we have. Protect the people we love, the cars we drive, the homes we live in, and the businesses we work so hard to build. At Dietrich Insurance, we're here to protect Hawaii and the local customers we're privileged to serve. So let Dietrich protect what's important to you. For auto, home, and business insurance, talk to Dietrich or your insurance agent. Dietrich. 
Hawaii is my home, and safety for those who live here is my priority. Our viewers count on accuracy, and I work hard every day to deliver. Tasia Worley, it's a good morning Hawaii on KITV4 Island News. Servicing Hawaii with a wide spectrum of dental services, Premier Dental Group is dedicated to excellent oral care. I love my dentist. They make your visits so relaxing and comfortable. It's like coming to family. It's the service, it's the personal service. I would recommend Premier Dental Group to anyone. Premier Dental Group of Hawaii. Hawaii dentists for brighter smiles and healthier lives. Visit us online today to make an appointment. Serving American comfort food since 1998, Big City Diner continues to serve local American comfort food during this shutdown, offering four different ways to enjoy your food. Delivery, takeout, call to order, and now order online. We're still open to serve you our exceptional meals with professional staff committed to a clean and safe experience. Visit us online and check out our full menu today. There's no diner finer than Big City Diner. Now, with so much changing on every island day to day, KITV4 digs deeper with breaking news, in-depth stories, and up-to-the-minute weather updates. Join KITV's Mika Miyashima on KITV4 Island News tonight at 10 p.m. It's Good Morning Hawaii. Welcome back, everybody. Even during an ongoing pandemic, there is still a demand to buy homes. Here's ABC's Deirdre Bolton about what you should do if you're looking to buy. This morning, the housing market is on fire. Home prices are rising at the fastest pace in 15 years. If you're not bringing cash to the table and willing to make a lot of concessions, you're out of the game. One standout example is in Austin, Texas, where people from Northern California are moving in droves. Some homes are selling in Austin for more than 100% above asking price. The list price is no longer the list price, it's the starting point. What is driving this frenzy? Experts say historically low inventory, historically low mortgage rates, and many professionals' ability to work remotely. Prospective home buyer Jessica Russell says she's been repeatedly outbid. We started looking about a year ago. Um, I have been told I lost out on a cash offers before. So, I mean, cash is king. Sadly, I can't do that. I have to, you know, go through a mortgage and everything. The competition is so intense that some would-be buyers are even skipping home inspections. A decision experts say is unwise. So if you've spent, you know, part or, or a large portion of your down or your life savings is a down payment, God forbid you have a structural issue or God forbid there's an invasive mold issue, it's not going to be a good situation. Inventory is so lean, active listings are half of what they were this time last year, and that is feeding fierce demand. Most homes are selling within a week of hitting the market. It's a very fast pace. And there's a sense of immediacy. But would-be homebuyers like Jessica Russell are not giving up, even though it's been a difficult year. But I do expect to hear the no because of the way the market is. Um, I would love to be shocked and hear yes. You start thinking, all right, you put the offer in. All right, in this room, I could do this kind of decoration, and I could get, you know, this kind of furniture for this room. So you get your hopes up. Tips for home buyers: look under your budget because the chances of a bidding war are high. Stick to your budget no matter what it is, no matter what emotion gets involved in the process. And lastly, get pre-qualified for a mortgage because as one broker told me, if you have to sleep on it, you will not sleep in it. You need to be ready to act quickly. Deirdre Bolton, ABC News, New York. Come here in upcountry Maui. There's a lot of clouds out, really no wind, very light wind, and it's quite chilly up here. But things could change as the disturbance moves over the state today. This was the view yesterday, though, from Thompson Road, or Oprah's Road, as we like to call it here. Blue skies, a combo of high and low clouds. Today, winds are expected to remain light and variable with a northeast element to them for the northern end of the state, southerly element to them for the southern end of the state. So we'll call it variable. Partly sunny skies this 
morning with scattered showers in some spots. In the afternoon, sea breezes are likely to kick up and that should lead to afternoon clouds and showers. The greatest chance of thunderstorms will be during peak heating hours in the afternoon from Molokai through the Big Island from noon to 6 p.m. Oahu is a bit on the fringe of the instability timing wise, so it's possible there. Keep that in mind. Um, we've got small hail, winter weather for our summits above 10,000 feet and heavy rain all possible with this weather event. So just want you to be aware that that is a possibility. This disturbance is expected to clear the islands on Tuesday with mostly dry and stable conditions, then working their way back into the forecast by Wednesday. A weak cold front could begin to impact us on Friday, so we'll definitely keep an eye on that situation. Wind-wise, looks like we'll get our trades wind trade winds back by about Monday, holding through much of the work week. So today will be that light and variable day and the day where really anything could happen. It's going to be a mixed bag where we could see pop-up thunderstorms and heavy showers um, just about anywhere. But in the afternoon is our highest likelihood, especially for our sheltered interior and leeward areas. We'll be back right after the break. This segment of KITV4 Island News is sponsored by Food A Go Go Restaurant Week. Hey, I heard Food A Go Go is doing the restaurant week. Where do you guys want to go first? Wow, there are so many great restaurants to choose from. Everything from local grind, fine dining, shabu shabu, tacos. We can try a lot of different things. Well, let's go. Food A Go Go Restaurant Week starts on April 5th. Let's support our local restaurants. Visit foodagogo.org to find participating restaurants and order the Food A Go Go Restaurant Week special for dine-in or takeout. Why do I love our Savior Lutheran School? My teachers. The after-school programs. All the friends I've made. My education. My faith. There are so many reasons to love our Savior Lutheran School. So come and see for yourself. <laughs> I guess I'm an artist. I sing and I paint. The staff here is the crux of the whole organization. Everybody seems to be concerned about how the resident is doing. This place is Ho'omaikai. I love it. I tell people that we're blessed to be here. atmospheric sanitization, completely safe and non-toxic. Here, come sanitize your purchases. Rise up, join the fight, become a hero. Ali, don't you drive any Elantra? I do, Sydney, but look at this 2021 Elantra, the North American car of the year. It's awesome. So come to Tony Hyundai at our beautiful Autoplex and discover why so many people give our Hyundais two <laughs> thumbs up. From KITV4 Island News, this is Good Morning Hawaii. Welcome back, everybody. The time now, 6.30 a.m. on your Sunday morning. Let's get you back to that breaking news we've been following all morning, a 10-hour standoff that left guests terrified at the Kahala Hotel and Resort is now over. Here's what we know so far. Just after 4 a.m., the suspect, who was barricaded alone inside a hotel room, shot himself dead, according to military personnel on the scene. Now, this all started just after 5.40 last night when Honolulu police officers first responded to a report of shots fired. When the security went up to the man's room, they say he fired a gunshot through the door. Police say no one else was injured. No one was injured. KITV 4's uh, sources confirmed a negotiator with the U.S. Navy was on scene, and Honolulu police believe that the the suspect. Uh, is a military service member. Now, we're told that the man's family was staying with him, but they were not in the room at the time, and they are safe. And we've had crews, as we said, on scene all night, and KITV4's Eddie Dowd is standing by there now. And Eddie, we know that people were allowed to leave a few hours ago, um, and actually this all ended. What are you seeing there right now? Yeah, well, Annalisa, like we've been saying throughout the morning, it's a very different scene now here. Um, as you can see, the road behind me is now clear. And just a few hours ago, it was filled with uh, police cars, law enforcement, and uh, heavy body armor and assault rifles, um, what appeared to be um, rifles. 
And but I want to stress though, at 4 a.m. It, it was a lot different. Like we saw, like we said, a much heavy buildup of police presence. Take a look at this video. Um, this is when. From what we saw, there was the first chance that law enforcement out here got a chance to take a breath because they were so, um, you know, on alert throughout this whole standoff. We saw them taking off their body armor. We saw them being able to finally put their rifles back into their trucks. We also saw after that vehicles, the cars being allowed to come out uh, from this street first time in uh, many, many hours uh, during this standoff. We also saw an ambulance follow. Uh, th those cars. We're not sure if um, the person who is in the room, the uh, the man uh, who is said to have uh, turned a gun on himself, was in that ambulance. Um, but we did see that ambulance come out here. We also talked to people who were in the hotel. Some of them just getting dinner uh, around 5 p.m. and were have had to stay inside there for eight hours. And we're finally getting into their. Um, Uber rides or taxis, whatever they needed to, uh, to get home at around 1 a.m. So definitely uh, not just a long ordeal um, for the hotel residents, uh, the law enforcement who came out uh, to try to ensure their safety, but also the people who were just getting to try to get dinner. So definitely we'll be continuing to follow the story uh, throughout the morning and throughout the day and bring you updates when we have them. Reporting live, Eddie Dowd, KITV4, Island News. Yeah, glad it uh, ended safely and not um, any no one else was injured. Yeah, Eddie, uh, keeping an eye on it for mm -hmm. us. Definitely going to stay on top of that story. Switching gears now to your weather, though. This is a live look out at Hilo Bay. The sun starting to come up over the Big Island, but some rain could be creeping up on us. Malika, how are things shaping up? Yes, that's right. We do have, there's a lot of ingredients, let's say, for this unstable weather to occur. So we're going to have, it's going to be one of those touch and go type of days where we're going to have to track this instability that's moving across the state. And also there's going to be daytime heating. And so all of these things together could lead to thunderstorms, small hail, winter weather, um, and even heavy rain. So we're going to keep an eye on it. Let's take a look at our weather highlights. We've got that disturbance moving in. Yes, it should lead to um, or also we've got land and sea breezes developing because of light winds. So today, Sunday, an increase in showers is expected. Thunderstorms are possible and this type of weather could linger through Monday. Here's our forecast rainfall model where you can see that there's more rain than there was the last few days. This model not picking up on too much rain, almost two tenths of an inch for Hilo and a little more than a tenth of an inch for Lihue, Wahiwa and Kahului, almost a tenth of an inch for Kapolei. So, you know, that is what our forecast model says. That's just one model, though. Keep that in mind. Our current temperatures in the 60s, 65 for Lihue, 63 Burr, Wahiwa, and Lanai City here in upcountry Maui. It's 55 degrees. Current winds are very light coming out of the northeast for us for Kauai and Oahu, Molokai, variable over on the islands of Maui, Lanai City, and Koho'olawe, as well as the Big Island. But on the Big Island, we've got more of a southerly flow to it. And our our winds will be shifting around throughout the day as this disturbance moves through the state. I'll have your eight-day forecast and your surf forecast coming up in a little bit. Now back to you. Now to your coronavirus numbers. The Department of Health is reporting 114 new cases of COVID-19 across the state. 74 on Oahu, 27 on Maui, 12 on Hawaii Island, and one resident diagnosed out of state. Another person diagnosed with the coronavirus has died, raising the state's death toll to 471. Well, across the country, the U.S. reported at least 75,000 new COVID-19 daily cases four times last week. John Lawrence reports this all comes as the nation is facing another potential surge, partly fueled by these new variants. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says COVID-19 related deaths in the U.S. are dropping, but confirmed cases and hospitalizations are on the rise. That includes people in the 18 to 25 age group. 
We are seeing these increases in younger adults, most of whom have not yet been vaccinated. Before the end of the month, all 50 states are expected to make COVID-19 shots available to everyone at least 16 years old. I'm hopeful that we can advert, you know, uh, you know, not see this uh, fourth surge, uh, but we will see hotspots as we're seeing throughout the nation. Pfizer is asking the Food and Drug Administration to expand the use of its vaccine for children between 12 to 15 years old. They've shown that in these 4,000 or so individuals, um, 12 to 15, that the vaccine is safe. There were no adverse safety signals and they were really effective. Actually, they are shown to be 100% effective thus far in the trial. If the FDA approves the emergency use authorization, it would be the only one authorized for children that young. First of all, we need them to get the benefit of the vaccine, but also it will help us to reach herd immunity a lot faster if we don't just have to rely on adults all to be vaccinated. I'm John Lawrence reporting. And as more people get vaccinated, more things are opening up and it is game on for youth sports on Oahu with new relaxed rules that start on Monday. And some leagues aren't wasting any time. Crush Academy is a soccer league in East Honolulu. They're starting up again tomorrow. Joining us now, Todd Inoue. He's already got his uh, jersey on. This has got to be pretty exciting for you guys, right? Oh, this is great. We're, everyone is excited. We've been waiting for over a year for this. Yeah, so this all kicks off tomorrow. So kind of um, what, what is that going to look like? What, you know, what are you guys preparing for? So <clears throat> teams have been practicing, and I think that's something that is has been great, but everyone's really excited for game time. And so there's a lot of new protocols and guidelines that clubs and Oahu League has put into place that are aligned with CDC and HDOH uh, guidelines and protocols. So. You know, we're really trying to just get above and beyond what it takes to keep families safe and players safe. And, and so what will that look like when um, when people practice and they take the field? I mean, obviously the, the city has their rules, CDC has their guidelines. You know, will you guys have masks or are there any distancing? What What is that going to look like for you guys? And so we do have a 100% mask mandate and this is done by the league as well as clubs. Most clubs are abiding by this. And also, you know, there are things like hand sanitizer, you know, before, during and after, cleaning equipment between and after sessions. We've also, as a club, have banned our players from participating on playing on the playgrounds at public facilities. We've also provided things like soap for public bathrooms while we're in session and using the facilities. And for some of our youngest players, we even have instituted a health check app so that the we, you know, parents can screen their kids instead of us having to ask them and maybe asking them questions they don't quite understand. And, and you know, what's what's kind of been the reaction? I know a lot of kids are obviously stir crazy. They're excited to get outside and uh, start playing again. But you know, there is some hesitancy still from from families. You know, what's been the reaction? Are a lot of people signing up? So you know, there there is some concern here and there and I think that that's warranted but as long as we balance physical psychological benefits with the risk of you know maintaining or mitigating the risk of COVID transmission parents families players everybody can really try to get those benefits out from you know getting outdoors playing youth sports like soccer and you know we try to communicate our safety protocols as best we can and we also try to promote flexibility because Nowadays, everybody is expecting change, and I think that's a good thing because it will happen as we learn more about this pandemic. So, I mean, as you guys kind of start up again, I mean, you're obviously a league. Are there, are there, are there already teams set up? Is there league play set up? Or where does that stand? So we do have a league that we put on within our own club, and so we do have unknown uh, rosters. We're not playing outside of our club right now. but. The transition this upcoming week is to actual league play across the island so different clubs will start to play each other and our teams our travel teams will be able to play other clubs and there's going to be you know rules in place like no spectators at the fields and 100 percent masks while they're you know participating in the game so there is going to be some changes and it's going to be a little bit more uh, widespread as far as players are concerned and families and and potential players coming together, larger groups. And so we wanna just be careful and balance those types of uh, risks.
Yeah, and then, uh, you know, definitely want to be careful, but just overall, just just how are you feeling? Just the excitement. I mean, we've, we, it's been such a rough year just to be able to get out there again. It's been a long time, and we've been waiting for really, really, you know, over a year, like I said before, and this is really for the benefit of the players. They, they, they need to get out. There's, there's clear psychological and physical benefits to playing sports, social benefits, and I think parents understand that there is some risk. There's always some risk involved, but if we really want to put the players first, they need to have a balance of safety and development. Very true. Toddy Noe, he's already uh, ready to go. Got the jersey on. Appreciate your time this morning. All right, thanks, Todd. And uh, again, he's with uh, Crush Academy. We'll have uh, all the information on how to sign up at KITV.com. Meanwhile, we're off for a break. Your time now is 641. More news and weather coming up. You're watching Good Morning Hawaii. Paul Drew's Weekend Evenings. At Farmers, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two, like how nice it is to switch and save on your auto policy. But it's even nicer knowing that if this happens, or this happens, or even this, we've seen and covered it. So call 808 Farmers and you could save an average of $366. Get a quote today. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Call 808 Farmers or visit FarmersHawaii.com for a quote today. That's 808 Farmers. When I was on Oxys, I really just needed to get my next pill. Like, I needed it. When I'd go visit my grandpa and he would go get me something to drink, I'd be going through all his pill bottles as fast as possible looking for what was there. I didn't think it was bad because they gave me their ibuprofen every now and then when I had a headache. With a lot more addictive drugs, you would think your family would be a little bit more cautious about that. Mom and dad put it in the prescription drawer. There's no lock and safe to that. Dreaming of Vegas? Fuel a trip to any Hawaiian Airlines destination at Hele. Earn three Hawaiian miles per gallon with the Hawaiian Airlines Bank of Hawaii World Elite MasterCard. You know about some road work that's going to be happening tonight into the overnight hours it's actually on the h1 freeway they're going to do a full closure of the westbound lanes it's going to run from middle street uh, exit to kehi interchange pretty much this red line here it's going to run sunday to Friday, 7.30 to 4.30 a.m. They're doing some pavement marking installations there. So your best bet, they're probably going to uh, make you get off of the Middle Street exit and on to Nimitz go to go westbound or stay along Moanalua Freeway. But again, tonight, beginning at 7.30, that full closure of the westbound lanes on the H1 Freeway. Thanks, Davey. Well, more than 100 volunteers cleaned up a long-neglected cemetery in Pearl City yesterday, but community leaders are now facing new challenges in maintaining the site. Oh, this is the dog. 17 members of Daryl Salvador's family are buried at Sunset Memorial Park. It's why he's helped maintain it for the past decade. Five generations of our family here in this cemetery. And what our vision is is to try to make the cemetery as nice as it was when we were growing up back in the day. As president of nonprofit Naohana o Sunset Memorial Park, Salvador says he and other volunteers took over responsibility of maintaining the land after the owner passed away. No one until today has ever came forward to take ownership of the cemetery. So it really is you and the community. It's us, yeah. It's the people who have loved ones buried here and people, again, who um, really give up their time and resources to help us. 
Pearl City Neighborhood Board Chair Larry Vare says conditions at the cemetery worsened in recent years and during the pandemic. There's a lot of transients that come through the cemetery, and unfortunately, they pillage the cemetery, uh, breaking into the mausoleums, the crypts. They've actually stole jewelry off the bodies. Crumbling walls, stolen bronze urns, even a hive of bees, an encampment, and now graves are sinking. We do have underground streams underneath this cemetery, and as it rains, the water level rises, and when it goes down, it drops, and so does the graves. So there are about 12 or 13 graves that we need to still fill in because of the, the rain. Salvador says he's trying to secure funding from private donors and grants to help make improvements. It really touches one's heart when you see other people coming out to help you know, clean a cemetery where there is no ties to them. This is the big part of Pro City's history and, you know, nobody else came forward to do it, you know, so I took it upon myself to, to get this done because I feel it's the right thing because in essence, I'm talking for people who cannot talk no more. And in addition to filling those sinking graves, organizers of Noahana O Sunset Memorial Park say they're raising money to build a fence around the cemetery for added security. All right, taking a live look outside over Honolulu, a beautiful sunrise peeking out there and, uh, on Oahu, and meteorologist Malika Dudley standing by from upcountry Maui with a look at your surf outlook. How's it looking if you're, uh, if you're on the Dawn Patrol there? <laughs> well, Dawn Patrol is looking not too bad. There's not a lot of surf is the only thing. So if you're heading out to go fishing or swimming, maybe it's better conditions for you. With the light winds, it is going to be pretty nice and calm out there. Let's take a look at your surf forecast. So there's no marine alerts right now for wind or waves. In fact, our numbers are way down, just one to three for northeast and west shores. South shores with a little bump of two to four foot faces. Low tide at 9.42 a.m. of negative 0.2. High tide at 4.52. 15 p.m. of 1.6. Surf along South Shores is forecast to gradually rise tonight into Monday as a long period South-Southwest swell fills in, peaking below advisory levels Monday through Tuesday, then fading out. East Shores will stay small and Northwest Shores trending up tonight with the arrival of a small West-Northwest. And our eight-day forecast showing that today is a bit of a mixed bag. We've got light variable winds, a bit of a northeasterly component for us for Kauai, Oahu, Molokai, more variable as we get towards Maui and the Big Island. This disturbance expected to pass over us and bring periods of unsettled weather for us. The peak time for that would be in the afternoon from about noon to 6 p.m. for Molokai through the Big Island because of the timing of the disturbance, but also that when it coincides with daytime heating, that's when we expect the heaviest of those types of um, impacts. We'll be back right after the break. Diana Co. Weekend Evenings. Save time, save money, and improve your ride with 0% financing on new Hondas at Tony Honda. Now drive a new 2021 HRV LX for just $159 a month. $159 a month at Tony Honda. From the smallest cottage to the largest house on the block, Wisteria Lane has something for everyone. Transform your home with one of our wide selection of flooring, a luxurious look for the everyday homeowner, and with an unbeatable pricing. Visit Wisteria Lane today. Growing up in Hawaii, I can tell you how to get around the island fast. With the best technology, I can pinpoint the problem so you can avoid it. It's information you need to know to keep you on the go. Plan your best route to your destination with Davy D weekdays on Good Morning Hawaii. At Revive Men's Health, we don't have a one-size-fits-all approach. We're focused on you. Whether you have low testosterone, ED, or other wellness concerns, our men's health specialists will work with you to build a tailored plan based on clinically proven treatments. Because the best medicine is customized, like a well-made suit. With treatments designed just for you to improve your performance. Make an appointment today, 529-0000, with Revive Men's Health by Universal Men's Clinic. Owning a small business in Hawaii is a struggle. It is a challenging time to open a restaurant. 
it is how you can adapt during these times that will determine whether you will make it or not. Hawaii National Bank, they are there for us from the beginning. Without their support, a business like family, woman-owned immigrant business would be impossible in Hawaii. They tasted our food, they love what we are doing, they believed in us. American Idol's Leah Hona finds out if she makes the cut. I hope that you understand this is for my peace of mind. The Big Island star joins KITV4 Live on Good Morning Hawaii this Monday. UH men's volleyball got a win over Cal State Northridge and their first mission is accomplished. Check it off the list. Outright Big West regular season champions. Their first since joining the conference. Left side, Akana tips on off the block at the line. Tell on the second touch. And there it is. With the sweep, make it 13 straight victories to start the season. The third best start in program history. 25-20, 25-20, then 25-21. Extended the school record of 15 straight road wins. Ronald Parapunov now with 19 straight matches and double-digit kills. Finished with a match-high 15. Hey, guys, congratulations. Uh, do you kind of let yourself at least a little bit enjoy this, celebrate? How do you celebrate this, Coach? Pizza with them or what? I'm going to steal a slice for sure. Final regular season series on Senior Weekend coming up this Friday and Saturday. Rainbow Warriors baseball were nearby in Riverside. Two games on the day. Coming off a Friday come from behind win to begin the series. Scoreless through four innings until Matt Campos with one swing of the bat and did that. A solo home run. The first of the Redshirt Juniors career. A former Iolani Raider. Scotty Scott went three for three. That RBI in the seventh inning extended the lead to three nothing. They really started to pull away in the eighth. Campos, another ribby. Cole Kaler delivered and another for Scott. Plenty enough as Kate Halimanu threw six scoreless on five hits. Rainbow Warriors win it seven zip. One ball, one strike. Fly ball to right field. Shanks to the track, to the wall. Look it up. And it's gone. Make it back to back and three straight for UH. With that swing of the bat, Cole Kaler completed the cycle. Just the sixth in program history and first since 1996. Kaler did it in order a single, double, triple, then the homer went four for five. UH winners 13 to four on the road in Riverside. There is now a new leader at the Masters as Hideki Matsuyama shot a fantastic 7-under to overtake Justin Rose for the lead headed into Sunday. He's up by four strokes. Cody Krupp, KITV4 Island Sports. All right, thanks, Cody. Well, turning now to space news, NASA is rescheduling the first experimental flight of the Ingenuity Mars helicopter. It was set to launch overnight. Now it's been moved to possibly later this week. ABC's Gio Benitez reports once the scientists fully understand the issue during testing that forced the delay, they're hoping to capture some unforgettable images. It's a selfie like we've never seen before. The Mars rover Perseverance on the red planet. And right there on the left is the Mars helicopter Ingenuity. Perseverance sending back these images of Ingenuity testing its blades. This NASA animation showing what it could look like as Ingenuity becomes the first helicopter ever to take flight on another planet. This is one of the earlier um, test builds of one of the blades. Wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> See? I mean, this, this is like paper. Exactly. Yet, it is strong enough for you to spin it through this very thin atmosphere at 2,400 revolutions per minute. Mimi Ong is the project manager for NASA's Ingenuity Mars helicopter. So this entire helicopter you're seeing from the top, little antenna to solar panel to the rotor system, fuselage and the landing legs, everything that has to lift has to weigh less than four pounds. Ingenuity will have to fly entirely on its own with almost no atmosphere after surviving dangerously cold nights, negative 130 degrees. And if it works, it'll set the stage for a new way of exploring other planets while capturing some epic images. 
and that will of course be the first ever images ever taken from an aerial vantage point on an, you know from a flying um, rotorcraft this is the ultimate drone shot <laughs> right no yes. other drone shot will match <laughs> this drone shot like a proud but cautious brother perseverance will watch and record ingenuity's historic flight from a distance about 200 feet away geo benitez abc news on planet earth jamming that ukulele there. Think you're a pretty good ukulele player? You can enter yourself for the International Ukulele Contest. If you can't video yourself, you can go to the Kanalea Ukulele at Windward Mall this weekend where they'll do it for you. And if you go there, you can get a little one-on-one -on -one instruction from ukulele teacher Trey Tarada. This is the first time that we're doing it virtually. And imagine when we look, at, look back at history, you're gonna be a part of the first bunch of people that got to be in the uh, virtual ukulele contest. Well, winners will be announced at the virtual ukulele picnic on May 4th, and you can enter through Wednesday at 5 p.m. Hawaii time. A lot of talent there. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Governor David Ige, meanwhile, extended the eviction moratorium through June 8th. That gives some struggling renters two more months of reprieve. And coming up, we'll talk to a mediation expert about what you can do now to protect yourself from being evicted. Stay with us. You're watching Good Morning Hawaii.